Everybody quite often says, Mayday, how did you get that name? And that kind of comes back to the autopilot circle in that our company was founded in 1972 by two gentlemen. One of them was Ken Malone. The other one was Bill Dawes. Well, the name Mayday came from their names of Malone and Dawes, and they added a Y to the MA of Malone and the Y to the DA of Dawes, hence we got Mayday. My name's Tim Brower, and the company is Mayday Avionics, and, um, you know, we've uh, been in existence. We're coming up on our 50th anniversary next year. Routinely, back in the day, we would start with people calling on old, 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 old autopilots, and then we kind of progressed from there. We've got an extensive history of doing autopilots that date back well into the 70s, if not prior to that. The options we had prior to the GFC 600 were such that it was old technology. It was, we were talking about people that were design, have designed autopilots that we were going to retrofit that were 20 years old, 25 years old. That was the technology we were going to reinstall in the place of their 40-year-old autopilot. Well, it wasn't until Garmin decided to get into the retrofit autopilot business where they brought the features that we would have expected to have in newer technology to the market. But you need the experience and the staff to be able to do that and do it properly. Um, and, and again, hats off to our crew. We've got some people with the, that have that experience, especially in 400 series Cessnas, 300 series Cessnas, like I said, guys that have been doing it for three and four decades. My name's Ed Ensink. I've been with Mayday since uh, 86. I've been working on autopilots for over 35 years. Well, a big part of the autopilot installation is the, is the actual mechanical part where you're mounting servos and checking aircraft rigging, working on bridle cables. Uh, a lot of times that involves actually working on the ship's primary cables and making sure that the, the actual airframe, the ailerons, the, the elevator, the rudder, everything is rigged properly before you start on the, the uh, servo installation. Initially, when, the, when uh, we're doing an autopilot replacement, so we're taking out an older autopilot, you could spend two or three days just removing the old servos, the old bracketry, uh, the old bridle cables. Um, if it's a trim system, sometimes, most times, the, the trim cable length has been modified for the installation of an autopilot. That typically has to be returned to original conditions for the Garmin autopilot. So if they installed a different trim cable, for instance, quite often you've got to go back to original uh, manufacturer no autopilot installed to install the Garmin autopilot. So again, along with that, taking all that old servo, old wiring out, um, it also gets into um, checking the rigging um, at that point before you even start the new servo installation. After the ship's rigging, the ship's primary cables have been installed or, or re-rigged correctly, or checked at the very least, the Garmin servo bracketry and servos are placed in the aircraft and the holes drilled and, and rivets placed to, to mount those brackets and then the bridle, new bridle cables are typically installed and tensioned. The twin Cessna is probably one of the more complicated platforms and it's largely because you are in every extremity of the aircraft. Um, you're rarely going to do an autopilot installation and not do a display. Occasionally the airplane will already have a display system but the biggest part of it is, is it's got to be in all corners from the absolute tail of the airplane all the way to the cockpit. And in some cases, sensors have to be mounted in the nose, depending on what your project includes. So I think that's a hard thing for a lot of people to grasp. When some people come to a project and we're halfway through it, I think that gives them a better realization when they see how extensive the airplane is opened up. And I think that combined with the fact that a lot of people don't understand the mechanical aspect of the autopilot. With the servo installations 
And we're frequently finding that ship's primary control cables have to be either replaced or changed to accommodate the autopilot uh, installation. And it's, that's what makes it a, a s extensive installation. Um, that's, it's really, it's one of those things that you've got to be really attentive to detail. Um, it's becoming a very difficult job to service some of these old autopilots just for the parts availability. Most of the installations we do, pretty much all of the installations we do, are usually in conjunction with a Garmin flight deck of some sort, either G600 TXI or 275s, sometimes a G5s. Why do we have beautiful displays in solid state AHARs, but our autopilots are 30 years old? That's what the GFC 600 introduced was a new autopilot with the features and functions that we needed that kept up with the rest of the industry. The GFC 600 is a super autopilot for the twin Cessnas. It seems to fly the airplane like it's on rails. Um, it, really responsive. The pilots love all the features. The indicated airspeed feature, for instance, that used to be something you'd only get in a jet. Now you can get that in a twin Cessna and it works just awesome. So you can do your climb or your descent at a specific airspeed along with all the other uh, navigation functions. It'll uh, fly a GPS in route or a GPS approach just perfectly because it's all digital. Today with envelope protection, wings level mode, indicated airspeed modes that work, okay? A lot of our jet customers even tell us the indicated airspeed mode wasn't very reliable. It didn't work very well. Well, it works now. It works with the GFC 600 installation. My name is Michael Overbeek. I own the airplane behind me. This is a Baron 58. I fly Boeing 787s for United Airlines when I'm not at home. Well, and that's, that's really the, the core reason I, I went with the system that I'm, I'm going with here, the, the, the 600 autopilot. I can run this airplane with the same procedures as I run the 787. You know, we're, our SOPs at United, you know, when we are cleared for the approach, there's just a set number of things that we do. It just completes the, the, the setup to shoot that approach. I can do that now with the Garmin 600. There won't be a learning curve. It will create continuity between my two airplanes. You know, that's just, that's just bottom line safety. So I, I, I appreciate that. I, um, being able to set an airspeed for the climb will be great. You know, it, it'll be a really nice function. Um, I've heard stories about the Garmin 600 where you can be 90 degrees to the final approach course and, and, and just hit approach and it still makes that turn. And that's brilliant. I'm not sure the 787 can actually do that. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's, it's going to make my, um, you know, make my flying safer. And you know, I carry my family around with me, so that's ultimately important. The autopilot that came with the airplane was a, a Century Four, and it, it didn't work very well. Sometimes it didn't work at all. And when it didn't work at all, and I'm, you know, uh, IFR single pilot, and um, it just, it just wasn't safe. It just wasn't a good idea. Like with an old servo, you'd have to build up an error to build up a, a, a significant error to actually have an error voltage that was strong enough to turn on a motor to move the control surface. The uh, Garmin Autopilot and being all digital, it just seems to react a whole lot quicker. The Autopilot being all digital, all the information that the Autopilot takes in from the rest of the avionics comes in on a digital bus. And at that point, the Autopilot computer processes that, sends that data out to the servos, and it actually gets translated into motion to move the airplane where it's supposed to be. Why we got stuck on Autopilot service 20 years, 30 years ago, is it's you are gonna use your autopilot absolutely every flight, okay? Maybe short of doing touch and goes, you will use that autopilot every single flight. And the GFC 600 comes into this platform where people are, are really tired of fixing old autopilots. And if you look at servicing old autopilots, again, back to what we said earlier, the extremities that the autopilot is th in, the, in the aircraft, now look at all the wiring that goes back and forth with those systems.
okay? Some people have said you got a quarter mile of wiring in a Cessna 400 autopilot installation. Uh, normally Garmin's kits are pretty good. They, they come with all the bracketry you need. The drawings are, are very detailed. You get to place the servo bracketry. We usually assemble the servo in the bracket and then mount the bracket in the airplane that way. So we're, we're, we're assured that way that our, our cable plays off correctly with the, uh, with the ship's cables. We get a, a real good mount that way where you don't just mount the bracket and then mount the servo. You put it together on the bench and then mount the whole bracket in there initially to make sure that it's going to go in the right spot where all the cables play off correctly. Well, these servos are awesome. Breeze to install because you just got one digital pair to hook up, either, either a 45 or a CAN bus, depending on the, the autopilot. But um, the installation, once you have that set and wired correctly, there, there's no chance that you got something backwards where it's going to run the wrong way or something like that. It's just amazing. The, 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 the stepper motors or whatever they use in there um, just control the airplane so well. It's a whole lot better than, than the old school where you just have a motor that's being driven by a servo amp somewhere. Uh, they're much more responsive. This level, if you're in the twin Cessna market, again, that's not a project that just anybody can undertake. And I, we've got a very qualified staff, uh, people again with three and four decades of experience in the industry. I started reading about Mayday and online uh, forums and everybody raved about this place. Um, the professionalism, this hangar is spotless. I honestly would eat off the floor. It, it just is, is amazing. So it's just a, it's a great place. Uh, I've, I've heard horror stories from Avionics Shop where they bring them here to, to fix other Avionics Shop's problems. And um, my airplane's a good example. They're only about a week and a half into this, but they're in that removal of everything phase. And the wiring massacre they found behind the panel was just appalling. And um, you, know, you know that in this shop you would never see that. They would never create that hodgepodge of wires. And um, it's, it's going to be really nice. Well, typically, we got guys working on the installation of the servos separate from the guys that are doing the harness work. So it's happening at the same time. Installation, when it's all up and wired, everything gets wrung out uh, before power gets applied. Power goes on and you start loading the software, configuring the different units, um, configuring the displays, configuring the, the, the GTNs. Um, configuring the 275s, the, all the airspeed data gets loaded, all the parameters that the, the uh, equipment needs, and then software gets loaded for the autopilot. The autopilot gets specific software for the airframe that it's being installed in. Once everything's up and talking together, then you start going through all your post-installation checks and step-by-step -step confirming that everything works the way it's supposed to work. After all the, the ground runs and everything are done, we, we usually have uh, one of the supervisors sit in the aircraft and go through everything a second time just to see what we can find. Um, it's almost a challenge to, to see what the guys missed, but uh, every once in a while we find something. We have a really good track record on no squawks on our, on our test flights, but that's attributed basically because we got multiple people looking at configurations and operations before it ever goes out the door. Um, this airplane, the autopilot was very weak um, and the um, flight instrumentation, the six pack was pretty basic. I didn't even have a flight director. So, you know, I felt like I was back in, in you know, 1980 flying an airplane with no autopilot, no flight director and, and um, you know, bounce around the skies. Flying single pilot IFR with a less than adequate autopilot was just not in the cards. Well, Mayday is the place. So I, I just, I came here. Um, there's a friend of mine that owns a Baron, and he always brought his, his Baron in here also. So I came over and I met Tim, uh, the Tims, both of them. My name is Tim DeWitt, and I've been with Mayday for just a little over two years now. I got my pilot's license in uh, 93 and uh, really enjoyed it. I always knew I wanted to fly for a living. To me, it's very intuitive uh, to be able to take a first-time non-garment pilot um, into the aircraft with me and instruct them. Uh, on how to use the equipment is very, very easy, um, just based on the simple logic and process. As far as uh, avionics training is concerned, what we would do is we would invite the customer down at the beginning of the day, 
and we set up the airplane with a ground power unit and I'll sit in the aircraft with a customer and be able to go through each different avionic with them and give them sort of a rough surface level um, sketch of how this functions and how it functions with the other equipment. So once we process that, uh, what we'll do is we'll take the aircraft out and I'll have the owner uh, fly his aircraft and we'll actually go and just simply learn the, learn, learn the avionics and kind of prove our ground school and, and walk through questions that the customer might have. Well, I, I, I always get a wow. I mean, I've never not gotten a wow, especially after the, the uh, GFC series of autopilots. I'll always get a wow of how the airplane has been put on rails, essentially. Um, big smiles, always enthusiastic. Um, everybody always enjoys what they've purchased uh, is, and never regrets what they've done. Well, from a non-technical aspect, to me, it, it, it's always functioning. So the autopilot's always functioning and keeping that aircraft in tune, as I call it, never letting it waver out of its course or altitude point or set points on the autopilot. And that wows a lot of them because they're used to having to deal with the older autopilots that may not keep the, the aircraft in uh, an orientation that they would want. We'll go out and we'll do overbank or underspeed or overspeed and, and get the customer involved with what what is the feel, what is the touch of when ESP kicks in. Uh, does it right itself? Does it keep us from rolling over? Um, you know, what are those aspects? And so we get the customer into a little bit of an unusual attitude and understand you know, what, what it does. Um, and as a pilot yourself, I mean, you understand that it, when you're in a go-around mode, things are very busy. Um, everything is, is, is required of you and your attention is required of you. Um, in a coupled go-around, um, one of the things that can be helpful in that case is to keep on course and to keep uh, the pitch attitude um, correct um, while you're applying power and bringing up flaps, cleaning up the airplane and, and potentially going back into IMC conditions. So. Um, so to me, that is a huge success. It's, it's much like having an additional co-pilot and, and, and flying it for you. Um, with VNAV, I mean, it's, it's, it's astounding to me that you can just punch one button and be able to cross a crossing clearance that's assigned to you at that point and be able to uh, not have to do any math, as it were, or, or figure your descent uh, point um, or your, your uh, profile down. So letting Garmin doing that really is, is enthusiastic. The first words I always hear out of those customers' mouth is it's like a brand new airplane. We're at Gerald R. Ford International Airport. We've got all the major rental cars. We've got very good airline connections here. And in turn, we did a 414 installation as far away as St. George, Utah. Okay, we've had customers from Boston. We've had customers from down south in Florida. We did a G1000 and a King Air out of Houston. So we're very fortunate to again have the staff, and with that staff, that's offered us the ability to flight check full panels with autopilots in 414s and have them come out on the very first flight test being fine. If you're looking to upgrade the avionics in your aircraft, and you are interested in talking with our team about the various solutions available, reach out to us at 1-800-678-1237 or email us at sales at maydayavionics.com. Thank you.